Well, we're here today with Dr. Patel, a dentist in um, the San Bernardino area in California. In fact, uh, Dr. Patel, I think you have four offices in, uh, in different cities. Um, uh, which cities are those? Well, we are uh, situated in Claremont, which is a college town, San Bernardino, Montclair, and Colton mm. uh, are the four cities that we have practiced in for quite a while. Quite a successful man, it looks like. Dr. Patel, let me ask you a couple of uh, things here. Uh, number one, you know, when we people, the, the laymen, uh, you know, the people who go to a dentist and who not, know nothing about a dentist, when we go to a dentist, we have somewhat a small dilemma. On one hand, we believe that every dentist is the same because you guys, after all, graduate in uh, particular universities and uh, you're licensed by the government. So, you know, how much different can you guys be? Um, and at the same token, we keep having that feeling that, no, that's not quite true. Different dentists have a different type of personality and a different type of, you know, belief on how they do things. Um, and I want to find the right guy for me, almost like a marriage, maybe not quite as heavy, but, you know, it's some trace of it. So tell me a little bit in your practices, what can a patient expect? Uh, you know, is it, a, is it a practice where you come in and all you get is the, you know, Tom Cruise, Julia Roberts type of smile? Or can I come there with my family or myself and say, look, I know I need a lots of work in order to have a beautiful smile, um, but... I really just need this thing functional. I, I need to make sure that I have no disease in it. Uh, the prettiness, hopefully, I can afford in a few years, but surely not now. It basically, tell me what can we expect. And maybe, if you add it, maybe you tell us what made you becoming a dentist, uh, Dr. Padel. It's always interesting well, to know. I, I, w I would firstly start with why I became a dentist. Well, all right. When I, well, when I was born in Mombasa, my father's best friend was a dentist. And I constantly played in and Mombasa his lab. Is a country, I mean, Mombasa is a country in India, I assume. Mombasa is the little island just off the coast of Kenya in Africa. That ah. is where I was born. What do I know? So, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, having been born uh, in a country where obviously care, I'm 58, so care 58 years ago or 50 years ago wasn't that great. And here I was with uh, always visiting my uh, father's friend and uh, looking at what he did and, and the difference that he made in people's lives. They would come in, mostly they were poor people that had, had problems with their teeth and their teeth would need to be taken out and they would have some teeth made and, and how he made those teeth and, and how he helped them function again. Uh, and it interested me very much. And so I decided at a very young age to become a dentist. To answer your question, yes, every dentist has the necessary skill to practice in California. Otherwise, they would not be licensed. But how do you choose a dentist is really entirely up to a person. Most of the time, they would choose a dentist from family friend referrals. Other times they go to the internet nowadays. What I have done in my life, I have been a dentist now for 34 years. I have practiced in England for nine years before emigrating to California. In my observation, the best way to provide dentistry to a patient is to first of all have listening skills. Patients don't come in and want the dentist to decide what they need. Patients come in and they want them to decide what they need. So I started my life like that. When you come in, the first thing we do is what are your needs? How can we help you? And in doing so, I created dental offices that provided care for children from the ages of two years old to adults, the ages of 102. And the reason why I did that was such that people did not have to run around half the town. 
they needed root canals or they needed a children's specialist or they needed braces or they needed surgery or they needed implants we have tried to create a team of people that have been together now for almost 20 years the same oral surgeon the same periodontist the same orthodontist the same children's specialist and the general practitioners that work with me like dr fountain dr cox dr miller all these men are very very educated after graduating after getting their license they go and do at least 50 to 100 hours of continuing education so their skills are at an optimum if you have a problem if you are not satisfied we are there to correct your problems and so the philosophy go is go ahead go, go ahead about it because you so, just said you know we said a little bit ago and you said it that yes people have skills and we don't want to diminish those skills so, but i think i got your philosophy so, that listening to people and right. giving them so what the they need and so want. The Exactly. The, so the philosophy is one to be able to be global in dentistry, being able to provide any all care that they need under the same roof if they want us to provide that care. Now, if they have a, a, an oral surgeon that they have been to before, that they liked better than uh, Dr. Hickey, who is 37 years an oral surgeon, who used to practice in Upland uh, for so many years, or they have seen somebody else that they like, they can go to that person. We do not refuse sure. that. You know, so uh, the intent is to be listening, to be providing care that the patient needs, to be affordable, and to help the patient. Always help comes first. Became a doctor because wanted to help people. Right. So when I come in and all I want, not need necessarily, but all I want is taking care of that one or two tooth, uh, which might need some periodontal, might need a root cut, whatever it is, even though there is other work in there, obviously your office probably will make me aware of it and will then tell me the importance of it. But you're not there to, uh, in another term, I come to, to, to buy a Honda and, and you want to absolutely sell me a Mercedes because it's just so much better. That's not going to happen in your office. I, I can get Definitely what I Definitely not. Definitely not. The patient comes in, they tell the girls, I only want one x-ray of the tooth that is bothering you. If I, am the pa uh, if I am the dentist treating that patient, I always go and tell the patient that, yes, you are paying me for a consultation, so if you don't mind, I will make sure that there is no cancer, there is no other problems. I will inform you of the problems that I see. However, I will concentrate on what you want me to do is take care of your problem today. Beautiful. If they choose to come back and do something else that is different. If well, obviously, obviously you're, the having, same you're having four offices, so people seem to be choosing to come back um, in a relatively uh, uh, a high quantity. <laughs> yes, yes, they do choose us quite a lot. And they refer their friends, they refer their families, they write good reviews about us. We have been in business now for 24 years since emigrating from England. So my let total you, years does, in practice. Does, let me ask you, sorry to interrupt you, um, you know, especially since you put so much attention on listening is important, um, but we have some time limitation here. Um, so let me ask you, Das, do you feel that having worked in different countries like England, that, you know, I'm sure you guys need to take different tests over there because they're not, I mean, you can't even practice in Texas and in California, so I'm sure you cannot practice from England to here. You need to again take different tests and, and, and basically a, a different mentality. Do you, do you think that having, uh, so to say, seen different ways of doing it, however different they might be or a little different, that that is an advantage for you to kind of, because I, I, I have been in the food business for a long time and having been in many, many different countries, it gave me a tremendous uh, um, advantage just knowing how other people eat, how they not eat and, and what exists uh, a type of stuff. Is that the same case in dentistry? Def definitely so. The English people do not come in because they have a crooked front tooth. 
they come in because they need some restorative care or they have a cavity or they need cleaning. Uh, here, people are more conscious about their smiles. They want white teeth. They, they come in with other needs besides just having a cleaning or maintaining their gum disease or, or making sure that they don't, don't have cavities. Don't get me wrong, not everybody comes in to improve their smile, but needs are different in different countries and affordability is different in different countries. People do not spend as much money in England on their teeth as they would here in California, for example. So the, yes, there are vast differences in, in the ways people demand care. Uh, well, my, under, my, the National Health, under the National Health Service, uh, patients wait for five months before they can be seen. Here, patients want to be seen the day okay. they call, 10 minutes later. Right, <laughs> right. So it makes a big difference. Right, well, maybe that is part of the reason why America has become what it is, because, you know, we, we want more, we demand more. And, of course, when we want more, we always demand more from the other people. So that's why probably professionally exactly. in America, and in that's America why is our pretty skill high. Our skill levels have to be very high because we have to provide the care that they need. And, and the important thing uh, that a dentist needs to be able to do is that, that the patient walks in and let's say I'll give you an example of a sedation patient, a patient who is very afraid of the dentist. We do sedation dentistry, so we put people to sleep or we give them a tablet to help them relax. But those kind of patients do not want to come in 20 times. Right. They want to come in one time. Right. So the dentists that work with me, they should be capable of doing everything that the patient needs at one time. Yeah. Well, that's what, only struck me, that's what struck me most um, that, you know, you, you, you from your interview, basically come in, get fixed what bothers you. Yes, we'll make you definitely strongly aware of what else needs to be done in terms of clinically and what else could maybe be done in terms of pure aesthetic and then leave it up uh, uh, to the patient. Uh, Dr. Patel, we are out of time. Most of the like time, this. most of the time we do not, most of the time we do not bring up aesthetics unless the patient is there for an aesthetic consultation. Because uh, I, I noticed that a lot of times patients will go in and they're told, oh, you need luminaires. Uh, why? Right. They need to tell us that right. they need luminaires. That's like, that's like me That's like me walking in a store and a, and a, and a guy tells me I need a, a, a $300 shirt and I go, Really? I, I'm quite fine with the twenty-dollar ones. <laughs> That's what I'm wearing exactly. now. And the guy exactly. likes the one. So aesthetics. Oh, but, yeah, got it. I got it. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I yeah. can see so why aesthetics. patients feel. I can see why patients feel comfortable in your practice, Dr. Patel. Thank you very, very much.